Hey guys, in today's interview, we are talking about how to get more brand deals, even if you don't have a huge following on your social media. And we're doing the interview with a full-time YouTuber and a full-time travel vlogger from uh, California, uh, Christopher Lau, also known as uh, C. Lau Travel on Instagram. Super excited to have you here. Yeah, man. It's gonna be Excited good. to be here. Yeah, so uh, can you like tell us something about you? So who are you? Uh, what do you do today? Uh, just give some context to the audience that doesn't know you yet. Yeah, so I'm a full-time YouTuber, travel vlogger. Um, I left the United States about two years ago. In like three days, it'll officially be two years since I did this full-time. Uh, and I've been traveling uh, non-stop for two years. I actually have a home base out in Bangkok, Thailand right now. And yeah, I, I have- Why Thailand? Girlfriend, girlfriend's there. It's it was originally going to be Bali. Uh, it was originally going to be Bali, but uh, girlfriend was is there and kept me there, which is great. Uh, and I so you couldn't city. find a girlfriend on, on Bali. No, no, there's no one right now. She was waiting for me in Thailand. Thailand. Um, but yeah, yeah um, it was originally going. It was either going to be Bali or, or a city somewhere else, and I, I met her there. So I've been staying, keeping that as my home base basically for the last year and a half, roughly, and uh, it's been great. So what are you doing today? Today, uh, I'm here being interviewed by you. You told me to do matching no, t-shirts, no, so I'm nothing. wearing matching uh, t-shirts right yeah. now. <laughs> blue, blue, blue color is the color of trust, by the way. Oh, good. Really, really. Okay. When, I'm, when I have a first meeting, I'm trying to close a deal or okay. business, I always wear uh, blue shirts because That's... it's subconsciously like, uh, people like you more. It's just, it's just signs, color signs, so to say. Yeah. That's why he called and me it's still an orange. Wear it. Right? Yeah. That's what I did. Uh, <laughs> tell us, tell us. Uh, so today, what, what are you doing today? What is your profession, so to say? So I work for um, companies, brands, tourism boards. Can you drop some names to give her? Tour companies like Hostel World, British Airways, Airlines, and I create exposure or content for them. So they have their own content nice. that they can use for marketing, or uh, I make a YouTube video and incorporate them into a YouTube video integration or like Instagram stories and promotion essentially. Nice. And what were you doing before you, like what was the job that you quit? I was in sales at LinkedIn for a couple years. Yeah, nice. I've been in tech sales probably for like 10 years. So I sold, originally I sold mortgages, like uh, home lending oh, for really? a few years, two, three years. Then I got into tech. Like um, I worked at companies like Groupon, LinkedIn. I sold LinkedIn learning, so like e-learning products, stuff like that. Nice, but, but yeah. you got a lot of experiences in sales, which for sure helped you. Definitely, oh yeah. Grow, huh? Exactly, I agree. Yeah, a lot of experience, 10 years, 10 years, yeah. 11 years roughly. So this interview is definitely for content creators, filmmakers, photographers who just want to get out there and get more uh, deals. Uh, and for sure, most people get stuck on the technical part. So let's just drop that out of the bag. So what gear are you using? So they will see that you don't need the most expensive gear to get good brand deals. So when you travel lightly, what is in your camera bag? Like short one minute, what one, uh, one minute um, um, well, recap? I, I have, I essentially cover everything from like land to underwater to air. So I have a drone. That's one. I have backup batteries for the drones. So I have almost three, FPV three drones. Though, huh? Not yet. One day okay, one FPV. Day. Um, so I have a drone. I have a GoPro which backup drone? batteries. Uh, which drone, by the way? DJI Mavic Pro 2 Zoom. So I originally huh? had the regular Mavic Pro, and I upgraded to the Zoom because I've had the Mavic Pro for two years, roughly. Use your camera tilting. Oh man, oh, yeah. it's happening. It's okay, we're still here. It's okay, then right. was that an earthquake? That was bad, yeah. That yeah, was, was an earthquake. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so where were you? Um, Mavic. Yeah, so equipment wise, I use a drone DJI Mavic Pro 2. Uh, I've used, uh, it's a Zoom. I used a DJI Mavic Pro 1 for about a year and a half, almost two years, and the battery started running out and, and just dying because I've used it so much. I think I've had like 120 flights of battery. Um, so I have a drone, I, I cover the air, I have uh, a GoPro Hero 7 Black um, for underwater. Uh, I have a, a camera. I originally had a vlog camera and a cinematic camera, mm -hmm. um, but to put it in one, I have a Panasonic GH5, so I have it as my vlog and cinematic camera. It's to really good for as video. As possible. Yeah, yeah, it's good for video. So like, if you guys do YouTube, it's like two thirds video camera, one third a photography camera, um, but it's really good for video. Um, and uh, yeah, I have backup batteries, so like four batteries for the camera. Um, the content have, that you deliver to, to, to your clients, is it in 1080p or 4K? Depending on what they want. Okay. Yeah, depending on what they want. So, But most of my vlogs, I'll put it in 1080p because most of the people are watching on like their phone. 
Cool. So, yeah, uh, what kind of content are you posting on your social media? So, why are people following you? Like, what's the value proposition of your socials? I feel like I, I provide um, valuable information on travel, prices, how to get there, uh, not just the informa like informative value, but like also visual, so like cool drone shots, um, good cinematic, um, just raw footage. Uh, as I travel, so everything essentially provides information, like very informational. I hope some of it's funny. Uh, I don't know how funny I am, but oh, you're um, funny. I, add, I okay. try to add a little humor to everything, and uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, I try to have fun with it. So it's, it's good informative <laughs> so videos. Funny. No. It's, good, it's um, good informative videos. Um, and and like, how do you decide to what country to travel to? So do you like sure. plan ahead? Uh, okay, I'm gonna travel to India, and then you check what brands are there, or do brands for countries uh, like find you first and th that's how you decide to travel to that specific country just like how do you plan your lifestyle since you said you're traveling full-time yeah so I pretty much keep everything um, pretty much for me I keep everything in Southeast Asia if I'm budgeting the, the trips I mm -hmm. essentially I'll normally get like one to four or five projects a year like not every anywhere I want but like very unique destinations like Morocco Africa mm -hmm. um, Scotland, stuff like that. What kind of Israel. projects can you be like specific? Just or? like with big brands like British Airways, like Hostel World, um, stuff what like that. What did you do for them, for example? Like what was the deliverables? So, for so those are brands that reach out to you? They reached out to me, yeah. Okay. So Hostel World, like I had to host one of their parties in Israel, like a, in, as I did an Instagram live for them. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a, like a post, but then I stayed there for like two weeks and I traveled myself and made my own videos. Um, so I'd say I get probably about two to five projects like that a year. Some they're somewhere really unique. I'll extend my stay, so it'll be a paid project, and I will be able to go somewhere unique. But primarily, I like to stay in Southeast Asia, like Philippines. I go back to at least once a year for at least a full month, which we're at right now. Um, Indonesia, I go back to. All my friends are in Bali, um, so I go back to Bali for a little, but then I explore Indo. Um, I live in Thailand, so I can get content in Thailand easily. It's it's beautiful there. So basically, you get, for example, a brand deal that drives you to that specific country and then you also reach out to other brands as well. You sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. On the trips that I want to go on, like India, mm -hmm. um, India is a trip that I want to go on because there's a festival that I want and I feel like it would do well on YouTube. And oh, I feel the like, with the colors? Yeah, Holy yeah, Festival yeah, yeah. next week. Um, and uh, so I'm going back to, I'm going, going to India for my first time and it's only 10 days but I'm going on my own, I'm budgeting it myself mm -hmm. um, just because I want fun content around India for 10 days straight. I'm a daily vlog. Subscribe to me if you haven't yet. See you travel with Christopher Lau on YouTube. I was waiting for the pitch, yeah. <laughs> so I'll be daily vlogging in India uh, starting in like two days, three days. Uh, and then Africa is a sponsored project, which I have right after with actually one of the top tour companies right after India right. for 25 days, 26 days Where? Um, around Cape Town. Did you reach out to them or they found you? We reached out to them. We okay. found their contacts at like ITV, like mm -hmm. a tourism board type um, conference my friend did. And we reached out to them together and we got the project together. So he's a blogger and I'm a vlogger. Mm -hmm. So uh, collabing. I'll be, I'll be posting videos on YouTube for them, five or six, uh, showing the experience with the tour company. I'll probably do more. And then um, my buddy will be making vlogs. So it's always good to collab with friends. Uh, to be able to offer more. Yeah, exactly. More uh, value. Okay, so what I want to do now is go in some tips and strategies that our audience can implement, maybe dissect the whole process. So obviously it starts sure. for, with, let's say, that you're at the point at the beginning, uh, you have a small following on social media or none. Uh, what do you do? What are the first steps that you can take uh, in order to, to, to well, get paid to travel essentially, get some brand deals? So obviously first is probably finding the brands that will say yes to you. So how do you do that? How do you recognize what are potentially good brands to work with? Uh, and how do you reach out to, the, to them, what can you offer them, just like the whole process, something that uh, the audience can implement if that is what they want to do. Yeah, definitely make sure you, you can provide the right value. Um, you provide something that, that they see as valuable. Just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean it's going to show value to a hotel or a tourism company or anything like that that can relates to travel. Be specific, like how do you find... So basically you're searching for problems to solve for a brand. Sure. Okay, what, what, what are the most common ones? What, what, what is the value that you can bring? Marketing. To your... I think the yeah. most common one that we all do is marketing. So that's like making videos or providing exposure on social media, um, content-wise, creating videos, photography. I think that's one of the easiest ones, uh, especially if you're passionate about it. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that you could do from 
Maybe you're really good at writing a blog. Maybe you're good at writing. That's part of marketing, though, too. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can write for these companies. Um, maybe you, you design good websites. You can design websites for these companies. You can go to different places, design websites for them, um, upgrade their websites. Um, get you can get creative in many different ways. I feel like. So if you know, so you don't have a huge following yet, so you cannot offer them exposure. But what you can do is offer them valuable content that they can use for. Uh, their marketing, so literally you have to do your sure. homework, check their website, check what is missing, maybe they don't have a video uh, yet, and you can re literally reach out to them and say, hey, provide them a provo like promotional video, like yeah. a dr drone video for 30 seconds yeah. they can use on their website, and if you don't have the following it, but if you can create something cool, something beautiful, unique, maybe you don't have to be the most professional, but if it looks beautiful, unique, if it brings value to someone, uh, and again, it's them thinking that it brings value, not just you. Um, yeah, you could probably get a few free nights, um, eventually get paid for stuff like that. And then as you're traveling, staying for free at these places, you can grow your own content. So on the side, build your own value, build your own content, build your own brand that way. And then you'll continue to grow on social media and then eventually these collaborations will turn into for social media collaborations and partnerships for exposure, which is what a lot of people want to get there. And like how much, how much time do you spend finding uh potential brands to work with and reaching out to them, on, just on average. Right? I used to spend a lot more, now I don't spend as much, because uh, more people are actually reaching out to me, so I can, mm -hmm. I can see who I want to work with. But it took you a while to get here. But it took me a while to get here, yeah. It took me a, like, almost two years, more than two years to get here. Um, took me sacrifice, I used to play a lot of tennis six days a week, uh, even when I was like 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. You got tennis arms, yeah. That's the right, the right arm is a tennis arm, a righty, that was my bad arm. Uh. Um, but um, I sacrificed tennis, I stopped playing completely, and I, I stopped going to the gym and everything just to get my video work better and, and whatnot. And priorities, different priorities. Right? You have to really be passionate about it too, otherwise you're gonna get burnt out. I think that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. tips uh, if you're gonna try to do this for the long run, you can't do it just for free nights and free stay, just for the experience, you have to be passionate about it. You have to really like it or else you're gonna get burnt out quick. But I think the same tips apply, it doesn't matter if you, you are based in a certain uh, city or if you're traveling around, reaching out to brands is essentially the same process, right? Yeah, pretty much everywhere. So yeah. it's, it's sales. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, oh, yeah. you, can you give us maybe some feedback, feedback about what were some of the mistakes you did at the beginning? So. I wasn't avoid them. I wasn't reaching the right people. Um, okay. So that, that's the tip number one. The biggest tip right now is find the right person. No matter how it is, mm -hmm. find the right person, the marketing person. So I wasn't the reaching, decision maker. Decision maker. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, how do you find him? Um, LinkedIn stuff like that. Going on their website, just doing in depth research. Uh, try to find it that way. What are the titles like? Um, not marketing manager. A lot or... of people DM people on Instagram. I know they DM these brands. Um, um, but so yeah, it's typically the marketing owners, manager, like, yeah, marketing director, uh -huh. uh, or even the, the CEO or the, the owner. Uh -huh. If it, it's like a small tour company or anything like mm -hmm. that in the Philippines, probably the owner. Um, and then just have a good sales pitch, like a good email pitch that shows the value that you can provide. You don't want to sound too cocky either, especially if you have a lot of followers. Um, but you want to immediately show the value, explain who you are, have a little elevator pitch who you are, why mm -hmm. you're there, what you can do for them, and then see what you can do to provide them value. And then open up a conversation. So it would be something like, I know, hey, uh, I've, uh, I'm this and this, doing this and this, I've noticed that this is missing on your uh, website. Sure, yeah. Uh, you I can do this for you, here's an example of my work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to chat about the possibility to work with you. Yeah, yeah, or you can, yeah. So make it as easy as possible for them to say, uh, yes, don't be like, hey, I got the, uh, 100,000 followers, okay, would you work with me? Which is like, hey, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm cool, would you work with me? No, you have to yeah, give them like, exactly. like a value proposition. Uh, cool, so reaching out to, to reaching out to the right people, mm -hmm. is there any other mistakes that you did at the beginning or that you see, that you see a lot of people do? Um. Or maybe let's put it this way, what are, Reaching out to the right people, I mean, tailoring my emails, I, I could get better at that. That's, okay. that's I mean, that's a given though. That's Never just, ending process. Um, and also you shouldn't like send the social, same email to, to... Everyone, you shouldn't mass email. You need to customize help. email. Customize, I need to tailor it. Um, uh, have a good social media kit, have something that like shows mm -hmm. the companies that you've worked with, some of the examples that so, like you've done. PDF. PDF, uh, yeah. You can make it on like canva.com. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's really nice, easy. What um, would you put in that uh, media kit? 
stats, demographics of my social media, maybe companies that I've worked with, hotel, big companies, name dropping big hotels that you've worked with. That's what I also do in email sometimes. Let's, let's take a complete step at the beginning. Sure. Um, I have almost none social media following. Sure. And I didn't work with any big brands. Like, what should I do? How should I get my first brand deals? You should reach out to places and, and let them know what you can do for them potentially. And sometimes if you're so new, they might like give you a discount. Like we'll give you 50% off then if you want to do the social media, right? And I feel like if it's you're so young at it and you're going to travel anyways, might as well pay 50% off for somewhere nice and to say that you've got to name drop them and work with them in the future, which I did. Uh -huh. And then I, I paid 50% off and then I used that name and got other hotels. I got started getting free hotels, then I started getting more hotels, then I started name dropping more and then it just grew from there. The momentum starts. Or if, yeah. if necessary, you do uh, you work for free at the beginning just to build your portfolio because if you have nothing to show for, why should people hire you? Yeah, for free, but yeah. half the time they probably won't even give it to you for free if you're that new. They might not. Um, cool. So. How do you reach out to brands? Do you do you call? Do you send emails? I would do like you... to call. Yeah, if I could call people, I will. Sometimes that's I will. scary to do to for a lot of people, huh? But being in sales for ten years, I think that's the up, the the upper hand that you have because I, uh -huh. I think the easiest way and the more per, the most personal way is over the phone. At least not if you can't do it in person. If I can't go to Costa Rica and then be at these hotels, talk to them face to face about it. I mean, you can if you want to do door knocking, but. If you want to prepare for it, which I would say two, at least two weeks to a month, a month in advance, before you reach out to these hotels. Ah, so you before you travel, two to four weeks is when two to you four start weeks, four weeks roughly is the, nice. the golden rule. Okay. Say a month is uh, nice. So obviously, most of our audience doesn't have the luxury to be. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, they were not selling over the phone, right? Sure, they don't yeah. have these experiences. So can you give us some tips about email. how to sell over the phone? No, even uh, like, over the yeah, phone, I think okay. it's it, it's more effective to, to like literally call. So like, how would the call go? What would you say? Just be very personal. Um, let them know like, hey, I'm, I'm a content creator, traveler, uh, mm -hmm. going to the area in about one month. I'd love to work with you and provide you either valuable content that you can keep and use for marketing or exposure, watch well, let's say you don't have the exposure, but just provide them value, whatever your pitch is, if it's designing websites, anything like that. Um, and being, let's say you have no ex like experience at all with hotels. Be, again, if, even if you're going down there, if you have to pay a discount, do a discounted rate, social media rate, that's what I've heard in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Get your collaboration there for the social media rate, and you can still say in your media kit, I work with this company. It doesn't matter. People don't need to know if you had to pay a social media rate, but you worked with them still. Drop the name. Exactly, so that's yeah. important. And definitely what I would suggest also is do some uh, homework about the brand. Uh, so you can also start a call, hey, I've checked your website and I noticed that this is missing or and I'm sure it could bring some value to to your company. So sure. uh, yep. they know it's not a generic call that you actually uh, checked. Check yep. them. You can also say, hey, I love what you do. Yep, I agree. Uh, stuff like that to make it uh, even more uh, personal. So uh, yeah, and and so we got calling, we got emails, and Instagram DMs. That's that's the most common way to to find brands. And how do you find brands? Like how do you, f yeah, how do you literally find brands? Do you like Google them or like what are the type of brands that you normally reach out to? Like hotels, tour, watches, watches. Okay, <laughs> not like move. Like everybody watches. reaches out to movement and like different. try to find something else. Okay, watches. Clothing, which I have a brand that I've used for a long time, nice. but now like I'm gonna do other clothing brands. Um, luggage, um, in other influencers that you follow, like the collaborations mm -hmm. they get, reach out to those people too, <laughs> people that they're working with, um, stuff like that, yeah. And then just DM them. Uh, can you give us some Instagram and let's start with Instagram. Instagram growth tips. Like how to grow your Instagram? Are there any specific things that they can implement in 2020 to... I mean, I haven't grown too much. Sorry, you know, what, what's the time? Oh, it's okay, thanks. Yeah? I mean, I haven't I haven't grown too much uh, over the last year. I think they changed the algorithm significantly. Okay. It was used to like post a lot, post consistently, have a specific time that you post, use hashtags. Um, it's getting pretty tough. And huh? now it's a lot tougher to grow, yeah. Yeah. Maybe collaborations might be the best way, hanging out with friends, big influencers, being their stories and stuff like that. I think that would be one of the best ways right now. Provide them value, so... Yep. Yep, I agree. Okay. It's tough. Uh, YouTube's similar thing, you could say, too. Just consistently post, I'd say. 
consistently post, comment other people's videos, follow the people that is pertaining to your channel, pertaining to your, your subjects, um, and learn too. So just post consistently and, and don't be afraid to just post. Just get it out there. But, and valuable content, of course. Any, yeah, valuable content, anything. anything even, even though you're vlogging, it, you're still providing valuable content in the vlogs. Like Exactly. So, so anything good, anything with value, yeah. Are there any mistakes that you see that beginners do on YouTube? They don't post. They just they, they, they don't post about, consistently. They, don't, they just talk about they want to make a vlog mm -hmm. or, okay. or they try to post. They're just afraid to post because they're afraid to talk to cameras and they're afraid that the number one judgment is how other people will think about them when they yeah. post it on social media, and that's what people are always thinking about before they post. How other people are going to judge you. So if you just you're going to be judged faith, regardless. So yeah, just, just like do, do it. who you are. Yeah, just got to do it. Post. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any any tips for people who want to start vlogging or interested start talking into camera? Be confident. Be confident, uh, especially when you're in public. If you're in public or if you're talking to camera like the videos he makes at home, that's just, no matter where you're at. Be confident. Like and look at the camera. Yeah, that, that, that's like scary to me. You know, it still is. <laughs> like hold the camera on a public place and just talking to it. Everybody's staring it's, at you. Like, it's fun. It's 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 fun. You and, get used to it, I guess. Huh? And, and if you have a lens finder or if you have like a, a lens that comes out or a screen that comes out that you can look at, try not to use it because people uh -huh. will a lot of the time be looking at that screen and you're not really looking at the audience. So you got to try to look into the lens and be confident. So because you're talking directly to, with, with your audience, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Did you have any fear at the beginning when you started vlogging or were you just like a natural turn on the camera? I think being in sales for so long helped me become somewhat of a natural in a way. Just being in sales, being able to talk to people over the phone, just being able to have that personality also. Um, I, of course, yeah, it was a fear, it was a little nervous, but I was more excited, which made me mm -hmm. just not think about people around me and, and kind of like being able to just say what I need to say into, to the camera at least. And then I'll look around like, oh, everyone's looking at me. And then I'll feel it. But I don't, I don't care when I have to do it. I don't mind at all. Exactly, yeah. I'm focused, um, laser beam focused. So we've mentioned, mentioned sales uh, a lot of times and I truly believe that learning sales is the fundamental of every successful mm -hmm. business, no matter what business it is. Uh, can you talk a bit about how to how to sell, how to be better at sales? Um, can you, give us some you could read there? sales books, maybe. I think some of the books helps these days. Uh, can you name job? Do you know any good books right now? I don't remember. This don't is remember? so long ago. Okay. Uh, I, I can. I can. I'll let him know, and he can put links below good. in the I'll description if, if you guys want to know. Um, I would say just the more the more emails you write, I mean, you also have to think about the reader who's reading it. You can't just write it. As a content creator, you got to think it's a marketing person who you're selling, like writing an email to, who you're selling mm -hmm. to. So you got to think about the audience that you're pitching and how they would react to what you're saying. It's all psychological. Um, just I would just read about it, um, watch some YouTube videos and other art of sales. The Art of Selling, I think that's a good book, actually. I know, yeah, it's really good. Um, and yeah, I mean, just keep practicing. I mean, it's sales is... Group. Sales, honestly, being in it for t over 10 years in a company, it's kind of like a gift. I've seen people struggle. I've seen people work 20, 30 years at a sales job and still not do well, still not hit their numbers, have to leave so late. And Why? Why? Not doing well. What were they doing wrong? I think it's, it comes in a personality. You know, sales is people people liking okay. the person, not just liking the product. They have okay, to like so the person you have to be likable. You have to be somewhat likable. And people, the thing about that is people can tell if you're fake or not. And a lot of these people who are faking it, who's worked at these companies for so long, worked so hard, People can tell over the phone or in an email if you're faking it, if you're just copy and pasting, if you haven't really done the due diligence to look so at their that's website. That's what we said before. Don't be, don't send generic emails. Exactly. Literally check the brand, and they need to like notice that you generally want to uh, help them, that you believe in the power of mm -hmm. video or whatever you're providing, that you uh, you believe that you're actually bringing a solution to their problem. So uh, find their problem. Uh, Talk with them to yep. dissect it even more, and then pitch them the solution. Yeah, and be confident about it, of course. Yeah, like you're vlogging, but don't be cocky about it. So do you, do you, do you say the price first, or do you, or do you wait the, the brand to say the price? You got to see what they need exactly. You never okay. say prices first. You see what I mean. The, show them the value you can provide, and then see what they need, and then talk budget. See if they have a budget for something like that. Let them know. Um, but that's once you get to a certain level. Once you have enough brands in your portfolio and stuff like that. Um, unless your work is phenomenal, then go for it. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah. And of course, at the beginning, Never like work for this. free or fifty percent off, as you said, then slowly start pitching. Yeah. That could be the first hotel. Couple yeah. hundred of bucks, and then exactly slowly progress to thousands and and exactly and beyond. Uh, what what is the deal that you're most proud of doing? Your favorite deal, maybe. 
Um, probably, I think I told you, I think I told you British Airways a couple of days ago, yesterday. Sure, yeah. But I feel like, I feel like honestly it was hostile world going to Israel. Because Israel was one of my favorite countries I've ever traveled to. The food is the yeah. best. It was so, so different than everywhere else I traveled to. Um, I think Israel could be my favorite project for Hostel right. Worlds. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us more about your lifestyle? So, is, is traveling so much exhausting or like... It's exhausting, yeah. It's oh, exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting, but it's yeah. fun. I mean, if you can balance it out. Like last year, I think I was at home in Bangkok at like 70% of the time. I was, I was traveling like... Having it as a base and then just... Yeah, then leaving for two weeks, one to three weeks, mm -hmm. two weeks, one week, uh, one month. I left. I went almost for two and a half months straight last year. This year I'm going for four months straight non-stop. I'm seeing Rachel at a few different spots, but... Um, Rachel is your... My girlfriend. girlfriend. Soon to be wife. Soon to be wife. Um, uh. What else? Um, yeah, I think it's nice to have a home base. So how much does tra Rachel travel with you? Whenever she can take a vacation basically, but we, we try to get as many vacations nice. as we can. Okay, so the next question is how to like literally get products for free. So not you, you said you don't only just work with brands uh, to create content for them, but you also work with them to maybe promote their products. You've got some free products from brands uh, in the past, like, yeah. Can you give any? Can you give us any context uh, or tips about that? I started like tagging some of the brands that I wear, even if it's brands and products that I bought. I would just tag them in like Instagram posts and stories, and then suddenly one of the brands said, "Could we repost it?" And then that's when you, I DM them back saying, "Yeah, but I actually have a better idea." And then I pitched them like I could like the ambassador. Um, what was the, the brand's name? Travis Matthew. It's like a okay. golf and tennis clothing lifestyle clothing okay. out in California. So it's like a really so nice brand. So that was your first brand deal. Oh, well, it's my first clothing okay. brand deal, like full clothing sponsorship. Which what was are so some nice. of the other brands you worked with? Low Pro, Manfrotto, uh, Joby. Um, Gear related. Movement watches, okay. Casio watch. I just did a campaign with, um, and Casio reached out to me actually. But um, if it's if it's if you're in the early stages, you want to like follow brands that you like. Also, um, stay active, like like their stuff, um, and don't be afraid to DM them and ask them, "Hey, I use your products. Clearly, I tag you in a lot of my photos. Uh, I'd like to work with you for collaborations potential." And then open up a conversation. And uh, what did you offer them? What were, were exposure? The... Exposure. Exposure. Okay. Instagram stories. Um, content a, a photo creation. posts. Yeah. Photo posts. I didn't do content creation. I was no, just okay. offering that. But yeah, you could also give them like a package of five photos, lifestyle photos, stuff like that. Uh, I think it's important here that that your social uh, look good, right? Sure, if you don't yeah. have a, uh, if you're not posting content that's relevant to the brand, they, they have no reason to, to to work with you. Exactly. So yeah. obviously you have to post quality content on on your social media, right? That's, exactly. That's, that's I agree. Hundred percent. Um, okay, moving on. Um, what? Who are your inspirations? Like, who do you follow? You're, you're my inspiration for uh, FPV. Thank you. FPV pilot right here. Um, thank you. Content creator wise. Okay, this was not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> I hope so. Content creators, right? Content creators. Let's say content creators, and also maybe because we talked so much about the importance of learning selling. Yeah. Also in, in, in that field. Okay. Well, my first, <clears throat> I guess, inspiration content creator wise was Lost LeBlanc. You, you might have heard of him probably. He's he's big especially in Southeast Asia for travel. If you're searching up like Philippines, yeah, Thailand, huge. Bali, his stuff will come up on YouTube. You watched a lot of your um, yeah. And yeah, I learned a lot of the work and, 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 and teachings from Christian LeBlanc. I'm actually friends with him now. So like two years ago when I quit my job to travel, within two months I actually met him, had dinners with him like four or five nights in a row. And now like I'm, I'm friends with the guy, which is incredible. I didn't ever really expect it that. Mm -hmm. um, but he's been my inspiration, his work ethic and everything for, for, for a long time. Um, besides Christian, um, some of the creators that I do like, the Sam Folder for videography, Ben TK, also okay. is very, very creative. I love the transitions and everything with him. And that's so unique, right? So, so all these unique. content crea creators so are so unique. So, so different, yeah. don't, okay, Another golden nugget. Don't try to be better. Don't try to be the best. Try to be you. Yeah. Be different. Be unique. Yep, I agree. So hard to do, but... Be yourself. And, be uh, yourself, yeah. But yeah. From that standpoint, I think I think honestly, Christian um, is just my overall favorite. Content made the creator. most impact. Made on the your... most impact, yeah. That's okay. Right. And from not content creators, but maybe more. Uh, I mean, of course, content creators are entrepreneurs. Sure. Yeah. They need to be. But uh, is there anyone anyone else that you learned uh, selling or marketing from, or was that? I think it's Christian at the most. I think it's my background. My background, background. being in a sales job for ten plus okay. years. Uh, I think just doing that for ten years in a, in a job. 
is which is pretty much what it, what made me into this. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's jump back in. Bye. Next question: Is there any difference between different? continents in terms of getting deals, pricing, let's say. So you said you're mostly in Asia, you also done mm -hmm. some brand deals in Europe, I guess, oh, in the States also as well. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some difference, differences between uh, different cultures, so to say? I definitely feel like the US and like the UK, they have more money than Southeast Asia, obviously. Um, Makes sense, yeah. From, from the type of companies that I work with, um, to the hotels, to everything. Um, so I feel like for the US, UK, you could charge a little bit more. Sometimes you do want to tailor your pricing. You don't want to just put your your specific fee for um, somewhere in India that you would pitch for Israel, because mm -hmm. um, Israel has a lot of money. Um, so yeah, you could, you could tailor it um, depending on the country that you go to sometimes. I know this is going to be a really tough question to answer. Sure. But I know that they're asking themselves right now, how much should I charge? Like, can you give them some general guidelines as a beginner or an intermediate content creator? Like, what are some of the rates that that they, that they could go for? That's like, it's I know it's such, such a super such hard, a, but such an easy question. Easy question. I'm okay. Just kidding. <laughs> even better. Even better. Uh, um, you gotta you gotta kind of just test it out. Talk to friends also that does it. Um, talk to content creators. Google it. Look it up. Um, test your prices out. I think the first year I was really undervaluing myself and I asked one of my buddies what he charges. We had like the same amount of followers and he's like this much and I was like, what? I'm getting paid okay. this little? Um, so I started trying to charge that much but then I got some no's. I did get a couple of yeses, not as many. Um, so I, I kind of lowered mine and uh, I have like kind of a sweet spot but you just gotta just test it out. And, and let's say first year, how much should they, let, let's say their content, let's, let's say their content is good. They know how to shoot video, they know how to take photos. Um, they reach out to a hotel in, uh, okay, let's say Philippines because we are in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, and they like, the hotel wants a promo video and maybe some photos, mm -hmm. simple. Uh, and it's like, a, I don't know, a four or five star hotel. So it's doing pretty well. Uh, and they don't want to drop the, the, the price first. How much would you pitch them as a beginner? It depends on how long the video is. Let's what, say one minute uh, what, long video, what, super simple edit that what, you can make in camera three hours. shooting. If it's a drone, like yeah, what? let's do, yeah, drone and with GH five. Okay. Um. Not not where you are today, but as a beginner, would you go around five hundred bucks or five, something like that? Five to seven hundred, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Um, that's okay. something I would even do now still, maybe around there, if it, depending on how long I'm saying what I need from it too. I guess this is a thing that you can do in one day, two hours of shoot and then edit it at the same afternoon. So maybe shoot so, a little more, but yeah, yeah, something like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Just to give them some context. Mm -hmm. Around five, seven hundred bucks. Cool. Because I know, yeah, like pitching and pricing is, is, is tough, but you will get better with experiences. Don't be scared to, to just drop the price out there and remember, especially if you're talking over the phone or if, if you are uh, talking in person, when you drop the price confidently, stay quiet. Even if it's for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, when, like don't try to start justifying the price, say 500 bucks and wait for the response. That's like a, a sale tip as well. Uh, any Final advice to, to our audience that you maybe want to give to, to content creators out there who are trying to... Just have fun with it. Um, be yourself, fun. be honest, be genuine, have fun with it. Work very hard, try to learn as much as you can. If it's creative content or whatever it is that provides value, it allows you to travel and uh, be safe. Yeah, and, and subscribe to my channel. Yes, he needs to sell. Oh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you Very for welcome. being with us. Thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this interview. You got some valuable information. If that is so, subscribe to my, no, joking, to both, both, to both channels. And make yeah. sure you wear blue. Make sure you wear blue on your meeting. And I will see you in the next video.